I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I felt like I wanted to talk to you guys about it. I just came back from a shoot, but the sun is gonna go down very soon and I'm like, you know what? I have to come and talk about it right away before anything else. But I've been thinking about my parents a lot. I've been thinking about how much I love them, how much I cherish them. If you guys saw my engagement videos, you guys can honestly see the love. Like what you see online is actually how my mom and dad are, except for the fact that my mom is a little bit more ruthless in person, but that's a whole other thing. I've just been thinking about the fact that yes, I am getting, I'm getting married this year. And so much has been coming across my heart and my mind, just thinking of my mom and dad like my mom and dad are my world and I've been coming across all these TikToks of like parents and kids and then this TikTok of this podcast of this mother and son where they're talking about their differences and not agreeing on things, not seeing eye to eye and there's a lot of healing but a lot of pain, all that other stuff and it got me thinking. I learned maybe 10 years ago that finally my brain like my mind woke up and was like hey my parents were brought up in a different society so this is the way it is this is not how it's supposed to be this is the way it is this is not how it's supposed to be and i never used to get a proper answer on why things couldn't be the way i wanted it to be but i would just get told no and i would question it a lot and i think rightfully so it's crazy because you know immigrant parents come from a very specific mindset and then when they start a family in a new country. It is so interesting to see the dynamic of, okay, this is how we're gonna raise the child, but when the child goes to school or the child has you know, friends or any outdoor activities or anything, and they start talking to other people, they start realizing that maybe this is not how it's supposed to go. So it's very interesting to me how the child has to maneuver, child as in me, because daughter of an immigrant, but how the child has to maneuver society and then maneuver what is going on in their home. My parents were, very very strict growing up and it was because that's what they knew they didn't know that they needed to have conversations with me and ask me how are you and be my friend or you know the only conversation there ever was was when you came home it was like what do you want to eat okay what did you eat okay okay did you do your work did you do your schoolwork? but it wasn't how are you today were you fine how are your friends it was none of that but that was when I was very, very young. And I'm very lucky that later on, it changed in my late teen years where my parents became my friends. But I had failed to understand when I was younger that they were brought up in a different society. I had failed to understand that my mom and dad are not doing this to me negatively. Now this is again my perspective of what I went through. Of course, everybody else's situations are very different or could be the same. I don't know, but I wanna know if you guys relate. I had so much anger on the tiniest things. Why was my dad so strict? Why was I allowed to do this? For example, why couldn't I sleep over at a friend's house but all my other friends could? My dad finally told me it's cause I trust you, but I don't trust who's in that house. I don't know these people. And I used to be like, what do you mean? I know my friend, I know their parents. They're bomb, they're amazing people. And my dad's like, nope. That's not happening. And I was never able to sleep over. I was so angered by such a tiny thing. Obviously there's so much more, but such a tiny thing. But this is the example I'm thinking about. And now when I look at the news and you know, we have social media and you look online, you see all this shit happening everywhere. And you're like, my parents were right. <laughs> There are many things that I know that our parents are right on. But then there's also those things where we as kids of immigrants go out and learn in society and we bring that back home. And also, I feel like my dad kind of began knowing more about the world through his you know, rise of super fan. And he got to become more lenient, more understanding, and would have amazing conversations. But before, growing up, no, these conversations were like a dead end. It was like the whole kedia na bas kedia. That's a Bollywood dialogue saying, I said it, that's it, I said it. And that's how my dad used to be. And my mom didn't really have like, she had a strong voice, don't get me wrong. When she's angry, she's got a strong voice, but she also knew like, you know, man of the house, this is that, and I'm gonna respect that. So every time I used to be like, mom, side with me, side with me. She'd side with me and then we'd go to dad and she's like, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. I'm like, thank you, mama. Thank you for throwing me under the bus. I really appreciate it. But I understand her perspective as well. Like everything that she had been through, for example, when she got married, daughter moves in with the in-laws and husband and then she caters to the parents and she you know does what she has to do and that that's amazing okay so many people do that in this day and age and I think that's wonderful because I'm all for families staying together but obviously at that time it was like no this is how it should be and 
you should be calling those parents, your mom and dad. You can't go back and see your family so quickly after marriage because someone's gonna think something is wrong. It's crazy to me because these are the things I'd question because growing up as my mom started telling me these things and dad started sharing it and dad's like, yeah, like it was such a weird, if you look at it, back then it was the right thing to do but now when you look at it my dad was like that was weird and even the changing of the last names all of that i'm so grateful that my parents have these conversations with me openly now we have such open conversations that we talk about you know marriage we talk about names we talk about you know in-laws and we give all that information i'm so lucky i'm learning from them my mom didn't learn from her parents my dad also didn't learn from his parents they just thought you get married and this is how it is you know and it, in a man's world. And my mom wanted to be a housewife. That was her choice. She really wanted to be one. And that gave dad a lot of grace and leeway to go do what he wanted to do when it came to work and to build his platform to where he is today. And he'll always say it, I would not be here if it was not for the sacrifices of this woman. Because of her, I didn't have to worry who was taking care of my daughter. When you find your partner, that's a new chapter in your life. No one's saying you're forgetting your past ever. It doesn't happen like that or you're leaving it behind. But, you know, your partner is somebody who you're creating a future with and your partner becomes like a priority, which is beautiful. And I really struggled with that because I knew that when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to find the love of my life. I'm going to get married. It's going to happen. This is where I'm going to get married. This is how it's going to be done. I planned my wedding since I was a kid, okay? And a lot of my friends could actually tell you, yes, she did. And then all of a sudden I had a full breakdown because I realized I'm getting married. I'm going to have a partner. I'm going to have to care for this person's feelings and my feelings. And same thing. He has to care for my feelings and, you know, his parents' feelings. And I have my parents. And it just freaked me out. It really freaked me out. I've always said that I want to be right near my parents. I want to be right beside them. But I understand, you know, you have to give that space as well to a newly married couple. I was talking to my dad about it. And I know this is like a complete rant and off topic. I'm just thinking about all these things. But I was talking to my dad about it. And he goes, when I got married to your mom and her and I moved to Toronto, we left everything behind and we started creating a life with each other. Your mom left everything, everybody behind. Not that she doesn't love them. She left them behind because she moved to a whole different country and I left them behind to start this feature with my partner and he's like rightfully so and I'm like yeah I get that dad but I can't I can't I want to only be with you I just I don't want to be anywhere else I just want to be with you I had a plan okay I was like if I don't get married I am going to just adopt like Sushmita Sen she's a Bollywood actress and a single woman who had to fight for adoption in India as a single woman and I was like, that's how I'm going to be. And I'll be taking care of my parents. And that's it. And I had all these thought processes in my head that this, this is the trajectory I'm going towards if I didn't find anyone. But I knew since I was a kid, I was going to have someone. I was going to find somebody who'd be my best friend. But now I'm scared because that's a whole new chapter. And it makes me so emotional. And my dad and mom had a conversation with me. They're like, what are you talking about? We know you love us. Why are you so afraid? Why are you not understanding that you need this? You need to take this step and prioritize your partner. And I'm like, no, because I only want to prioritize you two. And my dad and mom told me, they're like, you know, we left to start a life. That's what you have to do. And I'm like, but I don't want to leave. My dad's like, you're not leaving me. He's like, you're right here. You're not leaving the country. You're nearby. But I'm still like, it, it's hit me really hard. I don't know if it's adoption thing, but like, I need you guys to answer this in the comments down below if you got this far in the video. I keep thinking that my parents have given me the world and I know I've given them so much love. Basically, you understand my obsession with my parents. Also, fun fact, I don't, my dad can't track me. I track my dad and if he, he's not home, I'm like, where are you? You need to come home. He'll be like, are you home? I'm like, no. That's the relationship I have. Mom, okay, you're home? Okay. If I wake up and she's not there, where'd she go? Why didn't she tell me? I realize I'm a parent to them. They need their space more than anything. I'm the one who's being so clingy. Crazy because growing up, I was like, mom, dad, why are you guys so clingy? You need to let loose of me a little bit. And I always said like, loosen your reins. Let me, you know, go out and explore. And now I'm like, I don't want my reins loosened. I just want to be stuck to you. My parents are so amazing and I can't wait to be a parent one day because if I can be a percentage of how they are, then I truly am an amazing parent. But yeah, I don't know, just something that I've been thinking about and how much I love them and cherish them. I've always said blood doesn't mean anything, okay? It's family, love, and loyalty. 
doesn't mean if you were if you have a biological parent biological sibling or not you actually may not get along with them love when it's given and love when it is received is what makes a family and if your parents you know you are having that fight you're having that rift try not to get angry because remember they were brought up differently try to be Try to have the conversations. Hopefully you can have those conversations. If you can't, that's a whole other thing. Hopefully you can have those open conversations. Tell them about society. Tell them about the things you see outside. Ask them what their opinion is. I ask my parents so many questions now. Again, I do understand that I am blessed that my parents were, are very patient with me and talk to me because I know households where the parents just don't want to talk to their kids or there's no conversation. And it's really, really hard for the kids. I love how I'm saying kids, but they're people my age, but to maneuver and move forward in life and not be depressed when they're home or not be sad when they're home, not be hurt when they're home because your home is supposed to be a home. But if you enter it and it doesn't feel like a home, then it's just a place that you're living. I talk to my friends, I understand it. I'll never say that I can feel the pain, but I understand it. So to the kids of immigrants, if you feel a divide and you feel like your parents are not understanding, please be lenient, please be patient. And hopefully, I hope that you can have your conversations and your messages across. But yeah, something I was thinking about. Make sure you just love your family. Again, that doesn't mean it has to be parents. It could be anyone around you. But yeah, I just want you guys to give me your opinions on this. Let's have a conversation. What do you think? I know it's just like a complete mumble jumble rant. I'm just going off everywhere. But it came across my mind and it's been a while since I've just kind of like released my feelings up here on YouTube and I want to bring that back. It's like I'm talking to a friend, you know? I'm talking to my family. I can have these open conversations. So yeah, let's discuss how you feel. And if you're not a kid of an immigrant um, and you are, be it a millennial, be it a Gen Z, you could still be a kid of an immigrant, right? If you're not a kid of an immigrant, I would love to know how you were raised. I want to know what are the things you questioned. I think that'll be really interesting. Also, can we just give a huge appreciation for this makeup look by Verdan Beauty Studio. Go check her out. She's amazing. Her vibes are amazing. Such a kind soul. I don't want to take off this makeup. That's one of the worst parts about getting your makeup done when you really love it. You're like, I don't want to take it off. Okay, I'm done admiring. Bye, guys.